There's a cop, there's a cop, there's a cop. Shut it down. We have a transmission fault, an engine system fault. <laughs> Here we go, I just pulled over because our check engine light came on. Oh no, we got a flashing check engine light. Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars and welcome to, I bought a kind of high mileage and kind of broken McLaren like 600 miles away from Chicago. <laughs> and here she is. Wow, are you kidding me? What's up, dude? What's going on, man? This thing is sweet. <laughs> What's up? Congrats on the new car. Thank you, thank you. Of course, my buddy John, watch JR go. Also, tech throwback. Tech throwback. <laughs> This is who I bought the car from, guys. Oh my gosh. This is serious. Is this mine? It's yours. Uh, bought and paid for. <laughs> Welcome to the doors, bro. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, we got the Autel going on. Uh, we definitely need that. This thing is kind of broken. Any misfires? Uh, I haven't seen any today, but it's a McLaren, so it's continually broken. Don't okay, worry. Okay, great. Look at this frunk. So much room. This is insane. This is like a practical daily driver. Picked up in here. That's right. It's my Uber. Yeah, it's your Uber. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Pretty fun. Oh man. It's nice. Thank you, man. All right. I'm driving this thing. Whoa. Oh my gosh. The seat's set for me. I am a midget. Okay, are there cup holders? There are cup holders, and they're right here in the center. Dude, this is insane. Wow, so you just did, what did you do to the doors? Oh, I put the soft close in, look at this. Uh, you used to have to slam them with like all of your might. Okay. Right, so now. Like it sucks it in. Like, Perfect, like oh my gosh. It's amazing. Was that a factory option? Uh, it was later on, not in the 12s. Okay. So this is the first year. All right, John, how in the world do I work this thing? I'm going to turn the hazards off. Uh, it did that, I think. Uh, oh, put okay. on the brake, okay. and then just push uh, down, and then push drive, and you're done. All right, I'm going to roll these up. Oh, we got tinted windows, sweet. Tinted windows. You're okay, last night I called up John, and he's like, yeah, your McLaren broke again. <laughs> Airbag fault, go to McLaren Service Center. You can see the light, and it, it shows when I scanned it and it shows that it's the uh, column airbag. Oh, okay. Uh, you don't think it's the clock spring? No, I think it is the clock spring. It, yeah, right, just, okay. It's like low resistance or something like that. So it's just a McLaren doing McLaren things before I even pick it up. It breaks <laughs> once again, and this thing has uh, a few other things wrong with it. A lot kind of more major than this. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, how, what are we, like 600 miles away from I think, Chicago? I think about 600 miles from Chicago. Yeah. Nonetheless, John and I are adventurous. Uh, and we are going to drive it all the way back to Chicago. It was hopefully not break. Well, I've already bought the thing. It's already bought and paid for. Uh, there's no, uh, there's no take backs at this point. <laughs> no take backs. But, uh, <laughs> how we do it on gas? Maybe we stop at a gas station. Yeah. I just want to look at this. This Dude, is like so surreal. Best part, when I drove it home, I got 22 miles per gallon for a bunch of the trip. No and way. on the way up here, I already got it back to 20, just driving down the highway for a while. It's an economy car it's daily driver. I mean, yeah, what, dude. And it, wow, man, this is crazy. The steering is it incredible. It is a go-kart. It is incredible. But guys, I've never physically touched a McLaren. I've, I've definitely never owned one. Honestly, I've maybe only seen like one or two McLarens in real life, believe it or not. I, I really, I don't have a lot of time to go to like car shows and stuff like that, and I've never been into exotics. This is probably my, the third best car I've ever driven. I called it out 11 Turbo S number one, and then the AMG GTR Pro number two, or this. It, okay. The Pro and this are interchangeable. This is incredible. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the closest car that I've ever driven to this was Rich's, Rich Rebuilds, yeah. uh, you know, Porsche Turbo S or whatever it is. I had Rich's car at my shop for like a month. I, I was scared to drive it. I drove it once, but uh, yeah, so far so good. And wait until you feel the power. Okay, so we went ahead and dropped by Mexico. We are in Mexico now. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> And it's rear wheel drive, it's, it's like super controllable. Rear wheel drive, and man, it's stuck to the road. Oh, it sounds so good. What kind of tires? Uh, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s in the back and PS4s in the front. And they're in pretty good shape, right? They're in good shape. Well, I mean, it's just glued. How much is this clock spring gonna cost me? I don't know. I know it's less than a thousand to replace everything. Oh. From the, yeah, I oh. looked I looked that up. That's cheap. Yeah, so okay. I like uh, every switch. Oh yeah, just a uh, parking brake up and then neutral. Oh, okay. And that's it. All That's right. how you do it. And then, hold on, where's, the, I don't even know where, I know nothing. Where's start, stop? Oh, it's right here. Oh, here it is. Yes. 
There you go. Oh my God, I'm such a McLaren rookie. I did do a, a decent amount of research on like the performance and mechanical aspect of the car, but I didn't watch like a Doug DeMiro video on all the buttons. That would have been the key. Oh, he would yeah. have explained every button. And all then, right. there you go. Thanks, man. <laughs> Just bought it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So, all right, not a whole lot to see here. You can't see anything. Yeah, this is a 3.8 liter twin turbo v8 so a very small v8 engine and it makes about 593 horsepower but did they yes. do the upgrade these ones have uh pretty much everyone took it in i think it was a free three flash right. to to 616 horsepower whatever so this one has it it does have the upgrade Cool. So similar to Tesla, how they offer free software updates, uh, McLaren came out with this car with 593 horsepower, and then in the following year, uh, they tuned it, and it made like 616 horsepower, and they offered that flash for free for all the owners that bought the first year, which is really cool that they offered that kind of support. I mean, 593 horsepower was already enough, and it was already doing zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds, rear wheel drive car, and running like a really low 11 second quarter mile. I think some guys were running like 1080s with these things stock. Uh, so anyway, this has the replash right from the dealer, so over 600 horsepower. Which makes no sense for rear wheel drive. Uh, it uses a bunch of torque vectoring, brake vectoring to make all the magic happen and straighten the car out whenever it's shimmying, so it's pretty cool. Something else I'm excited about is the transmission. They can be very expensive to replace and I have heard of a few failing, but overall it's a very fast shifting dual clutch seven speed transmission. Uh, seems to be working well. Great. Cool. Oh, here we go. The best deal in supercars right there. Wow. So he's got the window sticker on this thing. It was $256,000. Oh my gosh. So let's see here. What options do we have? So it was $229. So it's got a decent amount of options. Carbon fiber sill panels, $2,800. Sport exhaust, $5,400. Uh, red brake calipers, eleven. dollars Whoa, what is this? $4,000. Custom zoned interior? Is, yeah. Oh, is that because of the white? The white blue seats are special. Oh, wow. These seats, which they definitely need a little bit of cleanup work, mostly just this driver's side bottom uh, and the steering wheel. But this interior uh, was an option. But this is uh, 65000 McLaren miles. This is the kind of wear. This bolster is not too bad. I think it's great for that. Kind it's of not bad for like. This is really soft, like real leather, which actually is prone to wearing out quicker than the fake stuff. Yes. Um, so we'll have to fix the steering wheel. But other than that, I mean, everything is leather in here and it's beautiful. So yeah, that was... Uh, another cool option is this has the heated and memory seats and both sides have memory. The passenger and the driver have their own memories. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there's your 4,000 bucks there. Yes, sir. Premium Meridian sound system, $4,700. There's a huge amp behind this seat. I found it while I was changing the door latches out. The amp is this, it must be a thousand watt amp running every channel of this thing. Wow. It's got fiber in from the head unit as you'd expect. But what's funny is every single speaker wire in it is blue and orange. So really? yeah, instead of like doing something <laughs> that makes sense, it's like blue, 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 orange, 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 orange. And then each one, like each pair goes out to a speaker. That's the English for you right there. Yeah, if you had to troubleshoot that. Not fun. Game over. <laughs> uh, what else? Okay, so here are those electric heated memory seats, 3,400 bucks. Uh, and then floor mats and a car cover. It's got a lithium ion battery. They uh, all do. Yeah, so that's like a couple thousand dollars. but. Overall, this is a really cool spec. It's got some miles and some potential issues, but this is really neat. I, I told you guys a few months back I wanted to get some kind of broken exotic. I never thought it was gonna be a McLaren. All right, let's hit the road. was a C5 Corvette. I had a 99 six-speed manual with like 130 something thousand miles on it. And yeah, I think that's the closest to this 
I mean, it's not close at all, but yeah. for me, that's the closest yeah. I've ever had. The C5 is so far when you hit bumps, you know, like if we were hitting this bump, you'd feel the front end go, oh, yeah, it the, does that little jump. This thing's rock solid. So this has a hydraulic suspension, which obviously is probably really expensive, but man, does it work. All right, let's see here. Good job, John. That was you, a close one. You almost got up. <laughs> we were only going 55, but still, that's it's right. loud. Yeah, it's really loud. They get attracted to the noise. Um, this has a flat plane crankshaft, doesn't it? I think so, yeah. It yeah. sounds like it, and it shifts at like, it shifts at like 8,500 RPM. Yes. Oh, here's a good bump right here. Dude. You, you don't even feel it. This, this rides nicer than a lot of like actual luxury cars. This is nuts. Oh, so we, we broke traction a little bit there, but it kept it planted. Uh, I have all, every, what are we in right now as far as uh, settings? Just sport sport. Oh, so we could be in an even sportier. You, you can shut traction off. If you go to track, it turns the aids off because it assumes that you know what you're doing. So I, I got to say, even with the aids on, yeah. it didn't really like limit the power. It, it, it got a little squirrely, yeah. but it kept on ripping. It didn't like cut the throttle yes. or anything stupid. I wow. have, I've never driven it in track and I'd never, I, honestly, I'd never put it in there because the computer is so good at keeping the car straight. Wow. I don't want to experience what it's like without the electronics. All right, so something else just broke. We've only gone about like 40 miles. Yeah, you can't um, be entertained in this car. Yeah, we are done. This is the volume button. These are all sorts of radio buttons. Everything is locked up and frozen. Uh, this was a big issue with these really early McLarens uh, is the infotainment system. It's, uh, it's not good. And then, that, what is that, the reset? Well, you just keep holding the power button for a while, okay. and then the McLaren logo pops up. Okay. And then it reboots, and it should work again. They had an upgrade that came out, I think, like in the next model year or something, uh, that I guess is a little bit better. I mean, to today's standards, it's not, like, good. Uh, so the stereo itself, like the speakers and everything, are fantastic. We were just jamming out. Oh, there we go. We're back. They're static. Oh, and this is insane. The volume doesn't even start until about 40. Check this out. I'll just play static so I don't get copyrighted. Here's the volume. It's crazy. Yes. It's like so incremental. It's it's kind of kind of weird and annoying. I guess I, that's, I is understand. That a thing? Yeah, I think they were <laughs> thinking like this is a driver's car. They need full control. Let's give them a hundred levels of volume. It's insane. It doesn't make any sense. But yeah, so the infotainment system, it's laid out really nice, but it I guess it freezes up and it's not good. So so anyway, so we have a broken clock spring. We have a bad infotainment system. Yep. And then um, let's talk a little bit about the actual issues with this car and part of the reason I bought it because I don't really buy cars that don't have problems. That's obviously why you guys watch. We fix cars on the channel. I like the challenge. It's fun. And um, I'm taking something on here that, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this goes. But basically, this guy has random misfire codes. Um, it's running good right now, but periodically it will misfire. And that could be a couple of things. Uh, one of them is ignition coils. Uh, so basically that back glass doesn't really seal very well. And so when you wash the car or it rains, water will drip onto the coils, the valve covers and everything. It'll drip down and it'll rust out the coil and that'll cause a misfire. I don't really know of the fix. Uh, I mean, obviously you do the coils and the plugs, but I don't, I, maybe there's a better seal or something, but I don't know if they came out with anything upgraded to actually it's, fix that. Oh, that glass actually just floats. Oh. So there's no way for it to really okay. seal. It's so just, basically don't they just be careful. Yeah, they just designed it so it wouldn't seal for it. Yeah, so don't drive it in the rain yeah. uh, and do your coils and plugs every once in a while. I don't know. I don't get it. It's from Europe. And I, you know, my understanding was that it's always raining there. Yeah, doesn't it always rain in England? What's going on? English. It does, does, does it rain? I don't know if that's the right. So that's one problem. Um, not not that bad. It's, it looks like kind of a, a difficult job to do, but uh, oh, and McLaren wants $600 of coil, uh, which I'll show you guys in the coil video. We are going to work our way around the McLaren cost here uh, for that job, because if you went to the dealer to have coils and plugs done, It'd be like $5,000 or something <laughs> insane, but we're gonna do it DIY style in case all you guys out there watching my channel with your own McLarens need to do that. But the major issue that this car has, uh, and the big challenge here is that there is, they call it a damper, it's a driveline damper. I'll pop up some pictures here. Um, this part has springs in it, and these springs, they can rattle um, and I guess the, the idea here is that they cause false knock, which then gets translated into misfire codes. So that's kind of a telltale sign that this part is going bad. It was very common on these early ones. Um, I think it's a couple thousand dollar part and you have to remove 
like the whole back bumper and the whole transmission has to be removed. Um, so it's a big it's a big deal. I would imagine something like that at McLaren would cost upwards of like eight thousand. Uh, if you have an Indy flying into it, it's up uh, eight thousand. So I, oh. I'd say double that for McLaren. Wow. Okay. So yeah. like it could be like sixteen grand. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. it's a, it's a lot of time. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we're gonna do that uh, at legit street quarters, and it's right currently not acting up. But what can happen is those springs can pop out and actually lock the engine up. Um, nothing catastrophic, believe it or not. Uh, my buddy Arnie, who uh, owns Cannonball Garage, they modify it and work on a ton of McLarens. He's seen a few of these. Uh, nothing to the point where it like, grenades the motor, but you might go out one day and it doesn't start because the engine is locked up because one of these springs has just come out, like it's loosened up. So kind of a little scary. So we have that going on with the car. So those are the two major issues that I know about. Um, and then I'm sure we'll run into some more, some more McLaren goodness. So. Yeah, you honestly have to. If things don't break randomly, it's not a McLaren. Right, it's, it's, exactly. So, I don't know. So far, though, the ride on this car is just absolutely wonderful. Like, it is, I mean, I could drive this cross country. It's super, super comfortable. Uh, everything is in the right position. The climate controls are uh, right here on the door, which are just super, like, user friendly. Everything's in the right spot. You got a good grip right here. Uh, it drives straight as an arrow. The alignment is perfect. It handles great. It's not bumpy like what you're expecting on a supercar. Uh, it's not even that rattly in here or anything. It seems to be very well built and put together. Um, the transmission is spot on. The engine sounds absolutely amazing. And I love the fact that it has this sport exhaust. They put my Starbucks here away. We'll do a roll up to like 55 miles an hour. stops pulling. <laughs> hey, that, that 50 had an extra one. Never mind, never mind. Yeah, no, it's 55 miles. Yeah, 55. That's um, it. <laughs> oh, and then it just stays up there in the rev range. It's ready for you. I can't use the paddles right now, unfortunately, because of the clock springs broken, but wow. Like 600 horsepower dual clutch transmission. I mean, for being McLaren's like first mass produced car for the road, like, they did a good job, and all the reviews are pretty positive. Uh-oh, this is not the guy to be behind. Okay, yeah, I get it. This is bad. We got cows that are crapping all over the place. <laughs> get out of here. It looks like you're getting hit a little bit. Getting man manure on my McLaren. Oh, no. All right, guys, check this out. This has the coolest feature when you slam on the brakes. an air brake well it's it is the spoiler but it has multiple modes it has like spoiler mode and then the air brake is straight up oh my gosh so that is the spoiler <laughs> that pops up to slow the thing down and then yeah as you're as you're cruising depending on the speed and everything like that it'll raise up for downforce and stuff so it has very very active aero and i believe that's hydraulic it is hydraulic yeah. yes so that is so so cool i don't know of any other car that you could buy for seventy nine thousand dollars that has that and this kind of performance it's like <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a bargain, honestly. And like, you know, you can get one with 30,000 miles or so for 100,000. And if it's got records and stuff like that, I think these can go up in value. I really do. Sure. Like they, it's a special car. It's a well put together car. I think they're kind of at the bottom right now. I've seen worse cars appreciate in value. McLaren's very popular. Uh, it's not considered like a failure car company by any stretch of the imagination. They have some of the coolest like supercars on the road today. I, this is kind of the first, and I think if you got a good enough spec with low mileage and a good history, and you bought in at like a hundred, and you could just sit on it, I, I think it'll go up. Uh, honestly, I think the next closest cars with air brakes that are hydraulic are about a million dollars. Really? Yeah, because what do you? You're yeah, looking I don't at even know of anything. P, else. P1, like, Carrera yeah. GT. I mean, none of the Lambos do because they use ALA. Right. So you're probably spending a million dollars to get yourself a active arrow with a speed brake like that. I mean, these guys were super advanced. Seven speed dual clutch that actually works well uh, in kind of the earlier days of that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, hydraulic suspension, torque vectoring. Uh, I, I mean, this was this was ahead of its time for sure. It's a giant giant computer. Bloody English did a good job, mates. <laughs> Cheerio. You know, I got to throw in my horrible accent. Yeah. That <laughs> so, I'm Man. so sorry. English people, feel free to make fun of us good old American boys eating our cheeseburgers <laughs> and our American pie. That's right. That's right. All right, guys. We just pulled over to take some pictures in the middle of nowhere. Yep. And I am... Oh, my.
my god, I'm freaked out, guys. I, I don't know what, look at that, look at this. I, I don't want to scrape. This thing ah. actually has excellent ground clearance. Oh, I made it. <laughs> oh. I have never been this nervous driving a car before. I am freaked out of like just ruining anything. Scary. All right, guys, we've driven like 100 miles or so, stopped and got some food. We have a transmission fault, an engine system fault. <laughs> Uh, there's our mileage. The airbag light is on as well. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, okay. There we go, airbag fault, cool. Thank you, McLaren. I, I scanned it, and the airbag fault is the paddle shifters. I mean, the transmission fault is the paddle shifters because the clock's right. Okay, good, all right. That, <laughs> that makes me feel really great. Yeah, it's not actually a transmission problem. Okay, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is a good idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. Okay, so I didn't even notice this at first, but we have a launch mode and a winter mode. And I think winter, it has to be active and then winter. Okay, there you see it. Powertrain went to winter. And I think oh, it turns some that. of the ESC off so you can get around in the snow. Okay, I wonder if it also starts it off in like a second gear type of thing. I bet it does. Bet um, it does. All right, well, I've, it I've, is winter time right now, but. I've never tried that button. Yeah, we got launch mode, that's cool. <laughs> when you start it, it's just like this. Uh, handling normal, powertrain normal. Then I hit active and it goes right into sport. It's crazy, you can feel the car lift up under your feet. Like yeah, that. yeah, it moves. And then uh, we have aero, so normal sport track, and then this is for the powertrain, normal sport track. This keeps the transmission at manual, and that raises the wing uh, auto, like instantly. Like right now? Yeah. Maybe it actually doesn't do it until you're moving. It's, pr uh, it's probably just broken. It's probably just broken. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But you, it does work. Okay, it worked at some point. <laughs> it was. Uh, it worked fine when I took off. Oh, I am in. I am in reverse. I don't know if that matters. Now I'm in first. It hasn't moved yet. Okay. Maybe it has to be moving. I don't know. All right. All right, guys. I'm going into track arrow. Oh, go. And we'll try track mode, too. Because that's, that's needed when you're in the middle of there, nowhere, the Iowa. The oh, oh, the wing just did something. Yeah. I, I pushed the button. It just oh, it something. works. Yeah. Yay. Maybe it's because we were sitting still, but as soon as we went, it just popped up. It handles so good. Broken <laughs> clock spring or not. Yep. You can hear the handling. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. You know it's working when you hear the scratchy noise. Runner bridge. <laughs> Wait, hold on. So, are we in the mode where I don't have traction control? No, I turned it back on. It yeah. just gave you all the power. Okay. <laughs> Dude, so good. Oh my gosh. I like how it was still starting to make boost. Uh, so, I think it runs at like 17 psi stock. Yeah. And then, um, of course, they sell like upgraded turbos, downpipes, tunes. What do these get up to like normally, like 800 ish? Yeah, like a, lot, easy, a lot right? of people do 800. I've even seen a thousand out of this car. It's crazy, oh crazy power. You guys have noticed in this video that I'm a little bit more subdued. It's because I'm nervous. <laughs> like I have never been so nervous driving one of my own cars. That was kind of a concern about buying like a supercar. I mean, I'm, I, I've definitely never really been into them. And uh, I always thought like, is that really a legit street car? Yep. Because it's like, I don't want to be nervous when I'm driving it, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable, all right? Yes. It's insured. It's controllable. I think I'll be okay. Oh, there we go. See, it it out. This is so cool. <laughs> Got a McLaren. <laughs> yes. Don't worry, everybody. I'm not going to like abandon all my, my cool cheap cars, my American stuff. A lot of guys have commented in my videos, like, Alex, whatever you do, don't get a supercar. <laughs> And it's like, why not? I'm like, I, it's not like I'm gonna just forget about like my Grand National and my Trans Am. I still obviously think that stuff is insanely cool. But I think in, in the world of being a car enthusiast, like I appreciate it all. I've been daily driving electric cars for like eight years now, so I like those. I've had diesel cars, trucks. I've had a, I had a two-door turbo diesel Yukon, that thing was awesome. Part of me not getting a, an older supercar type of thing like this, like an exotic, like a Ferrari Lamborghini was so a lot of reliability issues, not that I don't work on unreliable stuff, but a lot of it was stupid. And I was like, I, I, I don't know. That's just like Sam Crack's got a bunch of Ferraris, the 360s. The transmissions are horrible. Sure. Uh, like the interiors, everything's bad. And I'm like, what's the point? I'd rather just go buy like a Z06 right. or something like that. Same car, but GM reliability. Yeah. And, yeah. and then I, I started doing my research on this particular car. And I'm like, wait a minute. This one actually makes a little bit of sense. Like it is car you can drive, uh, put some miles on, and, and it's not that bad. And then they got even better. Like with the 570S, there was even less maintenance. It was more reliable. 
So basically, the 570s has that new crank damper in it, and then right, and then you're good. So I don't know. I'm saying this all now because yeah. I'm excited. There may be a video, like three or four videos from now, about me hating my McLaren, and I'm never buying another one of these things again. And I'm gonna go trade it in for like a '98. Honda Civic. Honda Civic. I was, I was gonna say Camaro. <laughs> Camaro, okay, okay. Which I still will probably buy anyway, yeah, but. For sure. There you go. I don't know what to say, guys. I like it. I like it. Let me know in the comments section down below. Is this car cool to you? All right, since we left the restaurant, we've gone almost 40 miles, 22.1 MPG. It's rated at 15 and 22 on the highway, and it is spot on. Good job, McLaren. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, okay, that's a little bit of a longer test. Oh, okay. We're back to some volts. Hang on. Clear those away. All right. About 15 average over the last 4,500 miles. That is not bad. And we have another screen here. Service interval. Service due in 320 days. That's because John just did the oil change. And more, more faults. I know. Stop telling me the same thing, McLaren. I'm not going to the McLaren service center. I'm going back home to cry. All right, let's see what this battery status is. It has like a $1,500, $2,000 lithium ion. 97%. Excellent. And more faults. Let's see. Oil status. Condition on it. Oh, okay, that's to check the oil. There's no dipstick. But oh, we got tire temperature? Get out of here. That is cool. And tire pressure. Good. All right. System check is okay. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> All right, guys. Here we go. I just pulled over. Uh, because our check engine light came on and uh, yeah that's not good <laughs> yeah. it hasn't been on for John in what like 15 long time. or no like 2,000 miles like yeah but long... also I think it'll just clear okay it did for me I think it's running the same um, yeah we're gonna stop and get gas there's just a rest station we just pulled over at really quick we're gonna stop and get gas uh, and scan it we have John's Autel here and then we'll see what uh see what these other codes are, but more lights as we go. And sooner it'll have we'll pull over and it'll have no lights again for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it runs great. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right, we're getting gas, and at every fill up, well, this thing keeps on popping back at me. All right, stay. With the okay, with the McLaren at every fill up, you just have to scan codes. Yeah, no problem. This is totally normal. Fire it up. Uh, we'll see what this check engine light is. We gotta hook this up. Oh yeah, that helps. Well, this is something new. Just like sitting here for a minute, getting all the drips down. I need a napkin or something. Don't go. Oh no, no! Okay. I lost. Oh. oh, I spent so much time trying to not do that. Hey, this wrap looks pretty good, clean though. Look at that. Wow. And I had this in my pocket from the airport too. Oh geez, I'm a bad McLaren owner so far. There we go. Sorry, buddy. The code that matters, the only one that's actually active is fuel rail pressure sensor rationality check. It had to make sure it was a rational sensor. <laughs> fuel pump pulse width modulation, duty high. Uh, I've, heard, I've seen that one once. I cleared it and never came back huh. until today. So. Okay. Uh, Great. Coolant below thermostat regulating temperature. It's too low. It was cold and for half the trip, the water, it might have been like 190 and I think it wants the engine to be at like 200 at all times. Okay. But luckily it has a very sensitive water you know, gauge okay. there. So. Well, what's turning the light on then? The active code? That, that fuel right. rail pressure. So, yeah, there's man, I wonder what that is then. I mean, it's gotta be something real if it's setting a check engine light in an active code. I think if you clear it, it's, it's not coming back. It For, could be a sensor. Yeah, I don't know. Or, or it could be These a are fuel the, pressure issue maybe. Uh, this is the shifters. Oh, okay. The switch general fault. And then whatever, APMU system fail. So we don't have misfire codes right now? Nope, so no misfire codes. Okay, so this check engine light is a totally new problem to you, at yeah, least, right? I, I don't see anything terrible in here. There's the this airbag failure. <laughs> Chad, I just wanna say, this has a new code yep. for a fuel pressure issue, and you're like, eh, hey, whatever, yeah, it <laughs> it's gonna be if, fine. I like, if it's got McLaren, <laughs> like, look at this. Random TPMS sensors not sending enough data, like, are you kidding? Well, no, I'm, they, I'm down. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I just, but, like, but I mean, I I'm gonna have to that. figure out. I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on. Uh, what is it? Fuel rail pressure sensor rationality check fuel. Pre okay, I'm gonna have to definitely look into that because it's the only one setting our check engine light on. We know it's got plenty of fuel pressure. And it works great. So. Wait, we know that? We know that. We know that. <laughs> this is insane. We don't. <laughs> John, we do not know this if has it, plenty of if fuel it pressure. If we did not have plenty of fuel pressure, it would not be working the way it is. <laughs> 
Because okay. it is uh, it is DI, you know, so uh -huh. it's looking for a ton of pressure. Yeah, but. there's so many people in the comments right now. They're like, just just buy a Corvette, Alex. Just, just, just yeah. buy a Z06. Why, you won't have why? any of these issues Honestly, at all. Though, what? Like, we, so we buy a Corvette, and we're gonna have oh wait, radio not reachable, radio communication can fail. Uh -huh. uh, what else? Uh, there's gonna be That's about you, it. Yeah, <laughs> at least there's at least four codes that every Corvette always has. I can't think of all of them. I don't know if any of them cost like ten thousand dollars. That's true. To fix though, That's true. so there's that. You can but, usually buy the car. You know, yeah. Windows it's, switch pack release circuit resistance out of range. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's uh. Let's let's just clear this. Oh one. well, you turned on your heated seat, so it's not a code. Even oh though your my heated gosh! Seat the heated seats are amazing in this thing, and it's <laughs> no, such a but code. They're broke. They're broke. They're amazing. Heater low the, status lamp the outfoot. Get out. when oh it when gosh. it pulled 131 codes, there was not a single light on the dash. Not one. Okay. Well, that's saying something. So like 24, 27 codes. I think we're we're basically a flawless McLaren right now. <laughs> and I actually heard from other McLaren mechanics when I showed that they were like, "That's just normal." You pull the codes on these cars. All right, cool. So, that's why I wouldn't worry. Uh, quick erase. Done. So we this, fixed it. We fixed the car. Now Done. Good to go. Okay. So sounds good. You can sell it. Thank you, McLaren yep. mechanic. That's what I'm here All for. All right. Yeah, this is an issue here with the doors on this car. So we got the door open right now, and there are a ton of rock chips. Look, at, I mean, you can literally see the rocks from the road. They just beat this up. So you definitely need PPF there. The wrap has kind of done its job but it's it's coming apart unfortunately good wrap though otherwise and then this is really common too uh, I guess you have to take off the lens to fix this and most people just kind of leave it alone because you could damage these in there they're not cheap that is for sure all right so we've cleared out all the codes we haven't even started it yet and we still have <laughs> seven seven at least. seven less seven so. at least that's just a good like resting heart rate that's right you know if you for McLaren. Seven, your McLaren's not even working yeah that's... it's not even a McLaren at that point really <laughs> I gotta say it's uh it's got a cool suede headliner black that's that's nice I like that very nice okay very cool spec though I really like this one so we, we gotta we gotta definitely clean up the interior though uh there's just some wear in areas like this but I think we can make this really really pretty <laughs> You can hear the turbos just kind of spooling down there. <laughs> oh, that's good. I love it. I don't care how broken it is. That just fixes everything. I don't care. So we're going to check the oil right now through the cluster. Um, let me see if I can figure this out. Okay, foot on the brake, hold it. And now you're going to need both feet. Oh, shoot. So okay. foot on the brake, hold the hold throttle. On. Okay, here we go. Apply throttle. And it'll go to two. Uh, you just clear it. You clear it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now hit. There you go. You just hold that. I'm doing this. So, like, it's not going to take over or anything? Oh, you're not holding it enough. Oh, and more? More throttle. There you go. Oh, there we go. And now Oil it'll count down. Oh, yeah. wow. We have 36 seconds of me holding this? Yep. This is insane. McLaren, just put a dipstick on this thing. It's so annoying to have to check your oil if there's people around, because they're like, what is wrong with you? I'm like brake torquing the thing at 2,000 RPM to check the oil. Oh, of course, then we got, you can just hit clear or whatever. And of course, we got the full set come back up. 15 seconds. Oh, come on. So then if you're doing an oil change, you probably have to do this a bunch of times. At least four or five. That's annoying. Yeah, it takes a long time actually. How many quarts of oil? Uh, five, five is where you start, if I remember right, and then you add like tenths. Okay, well, we're good. Good to go. All right, sweet. Let's hit the road. All right, guys, so check engine light is gone. We still got transmission fault for the paddle shifters and the airbag, so not bad. No we, more engine fault, yep, engine we, system fault. We fixed it. Yep. All right, guys, it's nighttime. <laughs> Steering wheel is worn out, yes. Check engine light came back on, and I have not done anything remotely close to wide open throttle so i was wrong i did not do it shut off last time for my entire ownership and then this time it screws me it comes right back like what on earth you guaranteed it though <laughs> i said i do not guarantee <laughs> those are my exact words so we have the check engine light on we went and got gas again we're watching some youtube videos and uh through the speaker system here and that froze on us so we had no audio yep. we got a little rich rebuilds going on yes sir. Uh, on his hellcat so that's what we're watching right now. And, uh, you know, there's about 15 failures here going on in the car. <laughs> but it still drives straight as an arrow. The engine feels great. It sounds great. Uh, it's comfortable. And I'm still happy with the purchase. All right? There's lots of things broken here. I was too, honestly. After, when I first bought it, super freaked out. By the time I got home with it, I was like, 
this car is exceptional. Yeah. Like broken, it's exceptional. Yeah. I've been I've been through worse. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I've been through worse. Uh, my CL65. You guys around for that V12 engine and then the hydraulic suspension fiasco? I can handle this. And it broke on the way home. It did. That was a brutal ride home from uh, Kansas. Yep. It was zero degrees out. The hydraulic fluid was leaking everywhere. The engine was misfiring. That was bad. And we made it. And this is a way better ride. All right, guys. We made it back. We're at legit three quarters. I never doubted it for a second. Right? It's so weird. it's got like 17 lights on now. It's got probably 131 lights. Yeah. You'd like uh, you'd, uh, DTCs, but you clear them all. and It ran to, great. Back to seven. All right, so I'm letting John take the uh, Chevy Caprice PPV for his rental uh, for his time here in Chicago. Everyone knows I made a video on this before. Yeah. I he, love this car. He had this a couple of years ago when we worked on the Lowrider Fiero. Yes. And it's pretty much the same, except it has nitrous now. It's got nitrous. It won't when it comes back. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we are going to uh, continue on with a little bit of inspection on this tomorrow. All right, guys, it's the next morning. I drove the McLaren home it's right next to the e55 and the cl65 let's see if i can figure out these doors no yeah oh no it locked on me okay come on mclaren you can do it Ugh. no wonder they got rid of this feature i think i made it angry lights are on now this is a very quirky car come on dude all right just hit the unlock button on the remote and it opens cool all right let's get a cold start Just idle down, and you really hear these turbos. <laughs> All right, heated seat on. All the warning lights on. Parking brake down, reverse. It's daily driver. It's easy. All right, I'm almost at the shop, but this check engine light that might be again for that fuel pressure issue, I think has put us in some kind of limp mode. It's just, it just doesn't feel right. It's weird. I don't really want to get on it again. Uh, let's, we got to check that out. Max is hooking us up with some pro shots over here. All right, Max, put the camera down, dude. Check it out. <laughs> he comes out, he's just working. <laughs> Hold on, let me see if I can get this. And like the wrap's really good, except for right here, I noticed there's like a line. Other than that, it's it's like they did a great job. I don't I don't know, dude. I don't know. Just okay. Jump in like surfing. Yeah, you just it. gotta jump in. It's got two cup holders. Yeah, man. That's fancy. It's, it's not messing around. You know that no Lamborghini comes with a cup holder. I think it's an option. Really? You have to, I think you have it might be an option on this too. We have a check engine light, an airbag light, and then if we go over here, the transmission fault, which is just the paddle shifters because of the clock spring. Uh, hey, we're at 65,000 miles. All right. And yeah, there's lots of codes. Oh no, we got a flashing check engine light. No way. This is not, I just made it back. Now it's gone. Now it's not flashing. Okay. So that's a catalyst damaging misfire right there. This is the first time I've seen that and that freaks me out. So we are not going to be driving this thing anymore. I was going to bring it uh, to Cannonball Garage. They specialize in McLarens and we're just going to like look it over and stuff with my friend Arnie, but no, 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 no. Now, the only thing I could say is the last time I drove home from Kansas was in the CL65 and we got bad gas. So they only have 91 octane, which that part of it's not a big deal, but we're in the middle of the country where first off cars that use premium are pretty rare now. Uh, and secondly, we're in the middle of the winter. So any of the cars that do use premium are kind of put away for the winter. And we're in the middle of nowhere, Kansas and Iowa and the country of Illinois, just not many cars. So it could be bad gas. And that could be why we're getting that fuel pressure code uh, as well, possibly. So yeah, we don't, we don't wanna mess around. Let's shut her down. I should be way more nervous than I am, but I still like the car. All right, we're waiting for John to get here, and then we're going to scan the car. So I'm just kind of looking around. There's not really a whole lot we can see. Um, that's it for the beauty cover. Okay, I shouldn't just rest stuff. I'm not used to working on crazy exotic cars. Um, what is this? 
Okay, we got a tube with tape on it, plug just sitting here. And like, I know some cars have like extra plugs for optional stuff, but what would be optional in this area? Like a coil or an injector? Like that doesn't make any sense. That is very strange. Okay, and it's a Sumco Sport. Okay, I don't know. We just scanned this thing and there's... Oh, well that's the fuel one. No, oh, that's we're back, not yeah. worried about. And then here's the crank tamper again. Okay. It's finally returned. All right, so we have the Fuel pressure regulator performance, uh, that is back. We saw that yesterday. Yep. And I, I think I'd seen that one before too. I'm not worried about it. But this is the one that freaked me out when I bought the car. I thought it was like game over. After talking to all the McLaren techs, this is the crank damper. Okay, so that's our flashing check engine light right now. I wonder also if there's a combination of bad fuel because when Max and I drove back two years ago from Kansas with the CL65, like I said, we got bad gas if you guys saw that video series. So this is literally the same time of year and we were going to the same kind of depot-ish gas stations getting 91 octane so uh yeah i think we're gonna get some heat in the fuel tank as well we get we gotta get to work that's for sure <laughs> all right guys we're gonna end the video right here because i want to put some heat in the gas tank i want to burn this gas out because i don't trust this kansas iowa gas in the middle of winter the kansas gas was fine kansas gas might be okay I don't, the in between I don't know. gas i mean there's actually stations in there that were at 90 because we've had to fill up on road trips before. yeah sketchy I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting rid of this gas. We got a ton of actual mechanical work to do. Uh, so in the next video, we're going to start on something. We're going we're gonna to get down and dirty with this McLaren. Um, so we've already fixed uh, John's wardrobe with a proper legit streetcar's hoodie. Yep. Uh, and next, we're going to fix this McLaren. Anyway, hopefully uh, we can get something resolved in the next video. So with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this adventure road trip in my new McLaren. Uh, and if you did, give it a big thumbs up. Share the video with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out Watch JR Go and check out Tech Throwback. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to link that down below his new awesome channel. Uh, and with that, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see all of you in the next video.